Righto. Let's kick this off. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Seek to sit on. Hi. Uh, I'm not Tom Middleton. Let's just make that. that yeah, and everyone's very, very thankful. That, mm, I'm not sure you're going to be that thankful for it. Um, as you guys are aware, Tom is away. He's on long service leave. He's also got very sick. He fell over fishing, cracked his ribs, punctured his lungs. And then while he was in hospital, they found out that he needs heart surgery. So he's going through the wars at the moment. So if you do see Tom at some stage, uh, give him a pat on the back, but not, not, too, uh, not too hard. Uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, secondly, it's actually been a long time since someone in Townsville's taught trust law. Okay. Um, just to be clear, everyone knows that they're in a room doing LA 3014 trust law. Uh, pretty core, pretty important subject as part of your legal education. And it is hard. Right, um, and so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview from a, just a technical perspective of how we're going to go through um, and do things with the recordings. You big chunk of people in the room. Anyone not had me as a lecturer in the past? It's probably not very many. I recognize almost all the faces in this room. Um, just make note, I live stream to YouTube. So you, I mean, you can go on and join the live chat if you really, really feel the urge. Um, and you can either ask and or answer questions or during these sessions, you can just point out to me that people are on the chat asking questions. That's fine. It also means you can do it from home if you want to. Um, so that's really up to you guys. Uh, the stuff will go on media side as well so that you'll have the option of both and like all of the subjects that you do throughout your university education if you have the opportunity to listen to the exact same material explained in a different way by a different person you should take that opportunity um, you definitely definitely should if you have the time going through uh, previous year recordings of this for, for Tom's lectures which I'll if they're not already on Learn JCO, I will put them on they're not Tom does not record. All right, we'll see what I can find. But the um, and but Nicola certainly does. She does uh, screencasts. Uh, they actually embedded inside her um, PowerPoint slides, so you can listen to the same material with a different voice. And sometimes you'll find certain voices will resonate to certain things. I mean, if you like high-pitched whiny Kiwi accents, then sure, you know, go for it. Uh, if you like lovely clean plummy English accents, go listen to Nicola's ones. Um, Okay, that's the first thing. So we've got the, the double choice on both of these things. Uh, the downside is that there's a bit of setup time. And not only that, when switching topics, won't be doing it too often throughout the subject. Usually it's one topic per lecture. But so today, I'm going to go through, do the subjects, information-y stuff, and then I'm going to stop the recording. So it'll be a separate, discrete packet um, on YouTube. And then we'll start again with the overview of trust itself. Um, probably in about 20 minutes or so, and that'll go for the rest of the class. Okay, so just, just be a bit mindful. Uh, there's a switching time of about five minutes each time. Okay, uh, another kind of annoying uh, technical uh, component to this is the, um, when I change the slides here, because this is the live stream, there's about a 10 second delay. So sometimes I'll be starting to talk and it won't line up with the slides. Again, if you guys have had me before, you would have seen that. And it can be a tad annoying. The, um, the URL for those things is on there, or you, or you can just type, you see, if you just type my name, you'll have to type my name with something like JCU or legal or something on there as well, because I'm the 206th Simon Walker in terms of YouTube videos. So um, yeah, don't, don't sit like I did and sit through the thing on the TV and flick through to try and find yourself. It, it, it doesn't really work. Okay, uh, some other things. The uh, contact details are up there as well. I'm the only law staff member on level three. You can come and hunt me down at any of those particular times. Um, there, basically, I'm teaching. I'll show you my bring my timetable up on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays. I'm the lecturer for administrative law and for contract two this semester as well. Uh, so just be a little mindful that on the days where I'm teaching, uh, there aren't very many gaps. But I do have formal consultation hours somewhere in there. Oh, they're listed out there somewhere. You want to put that on both screens? Will that help you guys? Yeah, okay, let's do that. Um, right. Sure. Uh, okay, uh, subject coordinator is Nicola Corbett Jarvis. That's right. I think that's right. In Cairns, she's been teaching trust for quite a long time, about seven or eight years. And 
If you don't like me, oh, sorry, perhaps that's a little, little bit of a low bar. If you do have any queries that you don't feel appropriate to send to me, send them through to her uh, and or the, um, you know, the head of law, which is Dr. Benedict Atkinson. I have a bunch of conflicts in this class. There's a, a, a series of people whose work that, um, for whatever reason, I can't mark that would go off. Uh, it's, there's a list of people between myself and the head of law, and that he will just go and organise the marking for that. Um, new thing this semester is Law Online. Who has ever sent an email to Business Online? Anyone ever sent any email once? The idea of the Business Online team is both a combination of of tech support within the college of business law and governance as well as uh, particularly the educational support as well uh, so it's really helping with things like learn jcu stuff but the, it operates as a general all-purpose sort of fix it team and i'm actually on that team so that if you send an email through to these days law online it'll probably be me who answers it um, so a bit of background i've been teaching since 2011 at jcu yeah, quite a long time, was it seven, eight years? Uh, this is the first time I've taught trusts. In fact, like I said, it's the first time anyone's taught trusts um, for a long, long time. And it wasn't Tom. And some of you guys wouldn't actually have done commercial law. Let me just quick hands up. Who hasn't done commercial law with Dr. Tom Middleton? Okay, so you guys will be essentially the first generation of people since, I don't know, 1991 who hasn't had Tom as a, as a lecturer in one form or the other. Um, so both commiserations and congratulations. I'm not sure what the weighting of those things are. Um, just make note that this subject is kind of special, kind of special, in fact, of all law subjects across uh, all universities um, in Australia. Why is that? Because this was the subject that young Ms. Jordan Leveri uh, cheated on an assignment a very long time ago, that's almost 20 years ago. And um, you guys might have been aware that before then, this subject used to have a pretty easy uh, like assignment, takeaway assignment, you go through and do that. And since then, Tom, I think in many ways quite wisely, has insisted for integrity purposes to have uh, a closed book, semester test and a closed book exam. And real hard ones. Closed book exams are not things that you guys have been used to as part of your law degree at JCU. Um, the, uh, the mature students amongst us who had to go through the equivalent in our earlier uh, university education are much more used to close book exams, but law doesn't do them very often. And so uh, as a result, it, it, this subject has a reputation for being tough, uh, particularly for those that haven't done commercial law with Tom. And so that's why I'm a little, little mindful of that in terms of you guys. And so it's something I'm really quite keen to ameliorate and appreciate that Nicola has a very strong education background, and so she is very keen to go through and try and use best practice stuff. So while um, I'm very conscious of trying to sort of smooth over the assessment for you guys to try and help you as much as I can, um, do appreciate this subject is hard. Um, I've sort of said tongue in cheek before taking over these three subjects this semester that I'd spend It'd be really funny if I spent like 5% of my time on admin law, 15% on contract, and 80% on trust. And it turns out, yeah, it is actually about that. It is hard to teach. It is hard to learn. It is difficult because of the structure of trusts. It's very, very nebulous and very sort of twisted and things contradict themselves, sometimes quite quirky ways. Um, so just be, leave that on the back of your mind if you are finding the material a little, a little bit challenging. Um, others in the class are as well. Okay, this thing. All right, so there's a couple of other things. This is this basically the admin component where we're going through the subject itself. There's my timetable again. I said I'm busy on those days. The semester test is booked. It's booked and it's fixed in time. And both campuses have to set it at that particular time, uh, whatever it is, uh, Thursday in week. I think it's actually quite late this semester. What's oh, third or six? Uh, is that week six or seven? Seven, yeah, it's um, so just um, just check that whatever is booked into the timetable, um, and all the subject outline, which hopefully, hopefully is the same. Um, tutes, there are two tutes. Uh, unfortunately, there were some difficulties with timetabling. I believe for originally there were three, 
one of them got scrapped and then it so it disappeared from the timetable then it reappeared so it's possible that some of you guys might still be enrolled in that i'm not sure double check that because the, those are the two time slots for uh, tutorials uh straight after the lecture and in i think it's on wednesday where are we this guy here they're both going to be in they'll both be in building 27 downstairs i believe in the same room yeah the big room at the end uh, room one i don't really care what shoot you go to just go to one of them um, because the uh, no, i've had a lot of requests for shoots to be recording uh, to be recorded and so the the thing is with lectures lectures by default are recorded the little red light can't pull it up when the little red light's on they're recorded and saved to media site i said i stream to mine to use youtube as well tutorials by default are not recorded um, that's for privacy concerns so what i will do during each of the shoots i will ask if anybody in the class has any objections to them being recorded and if there are no objections then we will record them and we'll put them up on learn jcu a um, couple of things there first of all I'm, I'm actually reliant on people in the class to actually bring recorders so feel free to bring a recorder but if you do record the one catch to that is that if if i ask for the recordings can you please give me the recordings to put onto OneDrive or, or something similar um, that would be really appreciated in the in incredibly unlikely event that somebody doesn't want it recorded then we'll ask the other chip and if there's and again never seen this happen i don't think i've ever had anyone object to just being recorded uh in the event that both of them aren't to be recorded then we'll go through and talk to nicola and see if we can get things from cans to come through okay that's the that's the next thing uh small admin thing to do with week two uh next week neil dan Jamie and I are away. Uh, we're going away to Melbourne. Oh man, for, for an IT conference. Yeah, sure, IT law conference. Um, so just make note that that Friday, so this lecture is actually gonna be moved to the Monday afterwards. So this, that Friday there's a shoot, which is unfortunate because it's actually the first shoot for this class, um, is gonna be moved to that Monday. So you can either go to the shoot on the, uh, whatever it is, the Wednesday next week, or you can come to the Monday one, or you can come to both. I actually recommend for people that have got the time, go to both shoots. There's no, there's no harm. Um, there's certainly, you know, no one cares. You, you guys are paying for your legal education. You might as well get the most out of it you can. Um, I've got no qualms whatsoever uh, going to those things twice. So feel free. Um, any questions on that? The rooms are in the timetabling app. So if you go into timetable, uh, jc.edu.au go and enter the subject code look at it it'll actually appear in there with the room codes as well okay um, I have been wearing many hats in and around this institution for a very long time I have worked obviously teaching in the in the law school but I've also worked for the international students office the estates office the indigenous school the college of arts and social sciences the school of engineering the cycling testing station and a variety of other probably other business units as well um one of the roles they have at the moment uh, given that i was um, i worked in it for a very long time over a decade is doing software development for the college itself and part of doing that is doing subject design so i'm working with the uh the basically the college subject designers in an effort to sort of reformulate the LLB. And by the way, always willing to hear feedback too about things that you like, but really things you don't like about stuff with an effort to be able to put everything so there's an online option for any of the uh, subjects. Okay, and part of doing that is actually going through and looking at what the university's policies are for stuff. Um, most of you guys have done admin law, many of you last year with me. Uh, what do we think of policies? Do they have a lot of teeth? No, not really. Policies are like predetermined decisions. You can't just uh, follow them blindly. But as a guideline, when creating subjects at James Cook University, three credit undergraduate subjects, they're supposed to be 130 hours worth of effort. So all of the effort that you put in, the subjects are supposed to be designed for that to be able to, but you know, basically that should be what you need to do to know the stuff 
to tick the box to say that you've read that particular um, graduate attribute and all those requirements. And 130 hours is a lot. That's actually a lot. Um, we actually stop and think about subjects we've done over the years. And for you guys, this, for many of you in this room, you'd probably stop back and think about it and think, well, have I put 130 hours into some subjects? Because hand on heart, there are, I'd say, very, very few for me when I was a student going through and doing that, to be honest. Um, but that's what it's designed to do. Um, put in four subjects. Um, what's that, 10 hours a week for four subjects? That seems about right, a day and a bit, including exam times for 13 weeks. Um, so that's something just to leave on the back of your mind. That's about the quantity of work that, um, that we need to put in. Right. Uh, some key dates. Census date. Uh, by now you guys should know what that means. Census date is your contract date. That is the date by which the federal government will give the university money and it will take that money or out, put that money in. Basically, it'll add it to your hex debt for those who are Australian citizens who are doing the hex thing. Or if you're choosing not to do hex or you're a dirty foreigner like myself, you have to pay cash. That's the point in time where that debt becomes um, liable. Okay, That is different and distinct from the point in time where the subject will start to impact your GPA. If you get to week mm, seven and a half, Oh, in fact, even most of the way through week eight, and you are you're just not going to make it, particularly if you miss the semester test uh, for without um, reasonable excuse, then that's when you can start to, to think about actually withdrawing from the subject. You'll still have to pay for it, but it won't count towards your GPA. And, uh, you know, I say this with a little bit of trepidation, but your GPA matters. Uh, particularly for those that are going to be competing against others, especially across um, uh, for big firms across the nation. If you're having to compete with people to get into the federal government agencies, even the state government agencies, you're going to be comp competing with other people and they will filter things based on your GPA. You're literally, if you're going to want to get a job at Norton Rose, first thing you'll do is put in your information into your GPA and if it's a, below a certain point, they won't look at it. Okay, now, one thing, a really important thing to note, is that we're not all playing on the same level playing field here. Some of us have got much, um, uh, much more onerous commitments to other aspects of life. Having kids, having uh, jobs, needing to pay the rent, um, having an awesome social life. You know, maybe we can argue that's some sort of special disadvantage. Who knows? But... Just make note, you can you, you play with the hand that's in front of you. Uh, what I mean by that is that you are going to have structural difficulties, all of us do, in our lives. Just do the best you can. Um, I am here. My job is to try and get as much of this stuff into your head so you can demonstrate that back to us so we can go to the auditors and say, these guys are awesome, they should all get HDs. Um, if I can do that, that would be wonderful. I'd be happy, you'd be happy, everyone's happy, and we move on with life. However, we do appreciate that life gets in the way and so that these things do naturally end up, sadly, being bell curved, partially because we, we, we're not starting on the same level playing field at the start of the semester and throughout the semester and because life happens. Um, and you guys should be old enough and wise enough to know that when life happens, if, you need, you're, gonna, if you're really struggling with the subject or any of your subjects, go and talk to the staff. It's one thing I, I've been teaching in the MBA space for the last few years. And the international students do not know and do not understand the, this concept. The concept of walking in to talk to the lecturer about difficulties in their personal life is completely alien to them. Um, you guys should know by this stage that that's, it's a really important part of um, particularly law, which is a very network discipline. But to be able to actually go and say, hey, look, I'm struggling. Um, you know, what can we do? Can we map out some sort of plan? What sort of help? What sort of extra um, uh, support services can I use in this institution or in the wider community? Um, you should get onto that. And I can't stress this point enough. Get onto it early. Uh, problems start when people procrastinate on these things. And look, to be honest, that's a, this is uh, something to do with the law discipline as well. Um, those that did... 
Uh, some of you guys did trust accounts and or you were done legal ethics with Jamie last semester, possibly in some of you in previous years. Procrastination is what kills legal professionals. We have limitation times and deadlines and they just let them slide. It's a really bad thing. We have to be proactive in this discipline. Okay, um, so yeah, the, the assessment is pretty simple. It's a 30% class test, closed book. You're allowed to take in, uh, I believe, a copy of the Act. Um, I'll have to check that. I haven't got the full subject outline in front of me. Whatever it says in the subject outline that Nicola prepared is exactly the amount of material you're allowed to take in. When I did the subject as a student about 10 years ago, we were allowed to take in, I think, the subject outline or possibly the case list, and we were allowed to highlight it. But we were allowed to highlight it in any way we liked. So you would have your shading on this diagonal is to do with beneficiary principles, and highlighting in magenta is to do with uh, certainties of intention. And we, we got very pretty creative in terms of doing those things. Um, I'm not sure what the rules are. I think you guys would have to go through the subject outline and check now. Um, it's possible these days it's unannotated because Tom got sick of walking through and having to check people's stuff and then taking them away, which is quite soul crushing too. When you're in an exam and you've got your notes and it picks it up and takes it away. And if you're doing, has anybody here done tax law? No, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of you guys. Have you, have you, is anybody doing it next year? Yeah, that's good. It's good. Definitely worth doing. But make sure you follow the rules for that because if Van comes in and picks up your tax notes, uh, the tax legislation and takes it away, you are done. It is so hard to do without that. I've seen it happen. Um, was it open book these days? Oh, there you go. Okay. All right. Solves that problem. Sorry. Um, textbooks. Textbooks. All right, here's some texts. All right, uh, first and first. Um, <laughs> there is one textbook that's prescribed for the subject. It's in the subject outline, which is the Evans book, which I've got an older version. I'm not sure if this is the current one now. This is the fourth edition. I think it's got a different heading. Has anybody got the book here? Anybody got the It's the same one you would have had for equity as well. Um, it's fine. I think Tom prefers this one. Nicola prefers the other one, which is the Del Pont book, heavier. Uh, one thing you might note, and it may actually be worth just going through, even if you go to the library, if you've got one of the books and you want to just have a look at the other one, go through and just have a look at the way some of the things are structured. And you are going to be horrified to see how things are structured in quite different ways. Um, it is one of those terrifying things when doing the subject, particularly when we've done subjects that have got a strong stat framework associated with it. Um, doing trust accounts, here's a stat framework, just follow it. Here's um, administrative law. Here's the ADJR. Follow it. Trusts and equity doesn't have that structure. And judges are going to explain things in different ways, use language, sometimes overlapping language to describe things. Sometimes one will say resulting trust would then mean a constructive trust or vice versa. And it makes it hard to create structure. And so if it's the one thing that I can help you guys with. It's to try and create some sort of structure. And it might help by going through, having a look at these two outrageously fat textbooks and just seeing how and where the structure differs between uh, the two of them. Um, there's, there's that, there's that. I think there's a case book somewhere as well. Oh, this is the case book. This is the textbook. Um, I believe when you purchase them, you get both together. It's some outrageous sum of money. Uh, there was a guidebook as well. Uh, one of the students gave me this to have a look. This is pretty bad. Um, it's got, I've already, I found like a half dozen mistakes in it already. And again, it's a bit, trust is a difficult subject to actually um, to create the structure and simplify it um, in a great deal of depth. And so be very wary using simple notes to try and answer questions for the subject. Okay, uh, other things, uh, databases. I've said the same to my other two classes. I do community legal. And a couple of years ago, I was with uh, some grades. In fact, this happened three times, but I remember the first one uh, most vividly. When I was with uh, a student who had finished doing her entire degree, was doing her PLTs, and was asking me a question about some obscure area of law, like bailment or something. And I just said, oh, just go into Hell's Priest. Just go into the Laws of Australia and, and have a read. And I got this blank look. The what? Yeah, the Laws of Australia. You just go into Westlaw. It's got the, the database, you know. And she said, no. Nah. So I went through. Open up Westlaw, go to the laws of Australia. and you, you, Do you guys know what I'm talking about here? You may or may not. Yeah, you're probably having the same look. Oh, one person, good job. Go into it and have a look because when 
I showed her this, she almost cried. Um, why were we never shown this at university? Uh, and I did have a response to that, but it was something of a smart ass response is that you would have been shown by Alice in your first week. But, no? What do we know? It's not cheating. No, it's not cheating. There's nothing, there's nothing hidden about this information. This is the way the law is explained by people who get paid to not just explain it, but also go and update their explanations of things. And you'll find when looking at it, you know, I mentioned about the, uh, the structure being different between these two. You'll find the structure in there is going to be different again as well. All right, but it is definitely worth going through and doing that. Is anybody doing towards B at the moment? You guys are probably all past that at this stage. So yeah, not a, not a very helpful piece of information to say, go and have a look at it if you're doing that subject. Um, I don't even know what the subst other substandards are there. Evidence maybe? Some of you guys will be doing evidence with the Chris. It might be worth going through and having a look. Okay. Trees and the killing thereof. Um, there's a bunch of pieces of legislation. Uh, you guys are aware that difference between a stat frameworks, which essentially codify the law, and those that sort of sit lightly on top of the law and sort of don't change it very much. What are some examples? The Civil Liabilities Act. When you guys would have done torts A and torts B, which clearly most people have done, didn't really change the common law much. Just this little, very light stat framework that sits on top of it. The Australian Consumer Law, a bit harsher sort of a, a stat framework, but still sits on top of the common law. Um, whereas other subjects, again, we're doing trust accounts. This is a stat framework. This is where it comes from. Um, tax is very much like that as well. Uh, and certainly uh, the criminal code. This is where with the, Sir Samuel Griffith tried to actually encapsulate the law at that particular point in time. And trusts is very much gentle, gentle in terms of not wanting to upset the apple cart in terms of the way equity sits in relation to uh, the law of Australia and the state of Queensland. So just make note, these aren't codified rules. They are administrative and regulatory rules. They do things like you can apply to the Supreme Court to do X, Y, and Z. Um, there is to be a maximum limit of four trustees and a discretionary trust, things like that. They're to do with regulation of the law. They're not displacing it, generally. Um, you guys, all of you have done equity. Hopefully you've done it last semester. Has anybody done it a few years ago? Um, and they've left a gap. Okay, so that's good. So a lot of stuff is gonna be fresh in your mind in terms of the principles that are there. And just make note that this trust is all grounded in equity. It's all things you would have, you would have, in terms of the high level principles, been exposed to in that, and possibly for those that did commercial, certainly in land law and contract A, you would have been exposed to principles of equity as well. Okay, uh, so of those, in terms of printing them out, closed book exam, uh, again, check the subject outline to see what you're allowed to take in. I believe you're allowed to take all of the above. I'd kill some trees. Um, is anybody doing secession law next year or have just done it? Because if you have either just done it and you've still got the secession act, that's handy. Um, and those that are going and doing it next year, that's also handy too. Um, it's a very useful thing to go and learn. Um, but yeah, things like the PLA, they haven't changed in a zillion years. So if you've still got your old printed copy from land A and B, just go and use that. All right, -o. Um, and the other two aren't very large. Um, the Charities Act, uh, the second there, from what I gather. Okay. Ah, how to do well on the subject? Pretty, pretty obvious, isn't it? Just go and do do the work, do the work. But appreciate that this subject is it is actually hard. Um, I don't know, no bones about that. Those that did admin law last year, um, they will remember, I, I, I don't know if I said that subject was a little easier, but I, I hand on heart believe that the structure of trust is hard to get in your head. Um, it's, it, it's difficult. It's largely ground in judicial um, decisions, decisions of judges, and it's grounded in equity too. So you've got the equitable principles that flow uh, from that as well. And sometimes they can contradict each other, or at least appear to. And Parliament doesn't jump in quickly 
on to trust. Although Bill Shorten tried to, eh? You guys remember that from the, uh, the last election? He was going to try to smack down on the use of trust in Australia as part of their election platform. And I remember well, I taught uh, a few tutes for tax last semester saying, oh, wow, you guys have to relearn all of this. And he didn't win. So it's been quietly shelved and will probably remain quietly shelved while you've got a liberal government. Um, turn up. I mean, you've already ticked that box by being here now, which is good. Uh, ask questions and ask questions during class. I have no problems whatsoever fielding questions during the lecture. I think it should be an active learning process. So stop me, interrupt me, ask me to confirm things. If I don't know something, I will tell you. I don't know X, Y, and Z. Um, I will endeavor to go research it, find out, and then talk about it in shoots or to the lecture next week. Um, so definitely get involved as part of that. All right. Um, they talk about active learning. Sitting there listening to lectures will only get you so far. Actually going and, and creating things, be they case notes, be they trying to structure particular concepts, being they be able to explain concepts in, in terms of IRAC style answering. That's the sort of stuff that you want to be doing. You want to be doing it from the, from the get-go. Okay, and collaboration. I mean, this is a closed book, hard test and exam, but you so say you want to collaborate as much as you possibly can with as many people as you can before you reach that point um, to go through, test each other, to see how and where you're going in relation to other people. Um, I said, uh, there's no problem sharing notes, there's no problem doing any of those things. Ironically, the subject that all law students in Australia had to read about from um, the Laverie case is also the subject where we wholeheartedly recommend get involved with classmates, collaborate as much as you can. Finally, fun. Um, yeah, I'm not going to labour on that point too much. Give it a go. It's not the worst thing that could happen to you. Um, you can try to, uh, you guys, so for some of you, this is going to be a horrible, horrible chore in terms of your education, um, but it ought not to be. It is actually really, really useful stuff. I, I say tongue in cheek that the, um, the two areas of law that differentiate the lay people from legal practitioners are equity and administrative law, because those terms are alien to people that aren't exposed to them. You don't see um, people on suits and or rake or all of those sort of TV type serials having cases involving trusts or having cases involving review of government decisions. It's not, not, it doesn't sound very exciting. And in fact, if there were no priestlies and you just got to choose the subjects that you're gonna do, I'm pretty sure 99% of the people in this room wouldn't depict a boring subject, equity or administrative law, because they sound boring. And yet, this is the stuff that makes you, you know, really differentiate, differentiates you, it makes you a lawyer, being able to go through, particularly looking at commercial disputes um, and things that don't fit within statutory frameworks, things that fall outside of the domain of the Family Law Act, for example, um, or the Secession Act. Um, all the various commercial um, statutes and common law rules. Um, this is important stuff to know. So, I mentioned before about the um, trying to do this by topic. So this is just the introductory little bit. As I said, it was going to be short. So we're going to actually now take a small five-minute break so you can have a yarn with each other while we go through, essentially change the slides. It's like being in the movies in the olden days. Um, and so I'm going to go and do that. And...